Okay, so yesterday we talked about test dying, which are turtles. Today we are going to talk about squamata. Squamata are lizards and snakes, so they are both in the same group. Um, squamata consists of both the lizards and snake groups. Now, suborder is Soria, which is the lizard. Remember that some scientists like to divide them into suborders. Um, some scientists recognize suborders and some don't. That's when it gets kind of into the nitpicky um, part of it. So, the two of them together are kind of grouped together. Um, they have a wide range of habitats. So, um, just as an example, um, last hour of my conservation biology class, we are working on identification, so we went out to the outdoor classroom um, working on bird and bird identification. Um, we actually found a snake when we were just walking around out there. So just out on the pavement, it's a little early for snakes, but there was one out on the pavement. Um, unfortunately, some middle schoolers stepped on it, which, you know, I mean, it, well, it was really hard to see. It was really small. I mean, it was like the size of a worm, so it was pretty small. They didn't mean to. So, you know, the snake shouldn't have been on tape. It, didn't, it wasn't intentional. But the idea is that they do have a wide variety of habitats. So, snakes and lizards have some different characteristics. Lizards have, um, most of the time, they have eyelids. Now, not all of them. I mean, geckos don't have eyelids. <coughs> but lizards do have ear holes. So if you look at Liz, Liz does have ear holes, and um, lizards for the most part have legs. Now there is an exception, there is a legless lizard, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Those are actually a thing. What? Those are actually a thing. Mm -hmm. A lizard without legs. It looks like a snake, but not a snake. Oh, and that's, that's this picture right here, legless lizards. They have different eyes. Yes, they have eyelids, which is why they are considered a lizard, because they have eyelids and they have ear holes, both of which a snake does not have. Can they bite you, though? Um, they do have teeth, but it is not like sharp snake teeth. Their jaw is also not like a snake jaw. Do so they have venom in there? No. Okay. Well, they're lizards. They have ear holes, they have eyelids. Snakes do not have ear holes, snakes do not have eyelids. <laughs> All right, so talking about lizards first. Um, lizards, there's about 3,000 species of lizards alive today. About half of the world's living reptile species are lizards. So most reptiles fall into this group. And most lizards do have eyelids. Again, the exception are the geckos. The majority of geckos do not have eyelids. Um, snakes. Uh, obviously snakes don't have eyelids, but that is in a different group. Lizards typically have eyelids, um, and you see with Liz, Liz also has eyelids. So we're talking about Liz's group today. <coughs> they close their eyes, and they have ear holes, which is weird because it is just literally a hole that goes into their head. They do not have any external outer ear. Geckos have the feet. 
Um, the gecko toes have like little tiny hairs on them. It's almost like Velcro. The little tiny hairs have small hooks that grab onto things. Now, a tree frog with its suction cups could not stick to the ceiling, but the gecko could very easily climb up a wall and then crawl across the ceiling. We used geckos for our <coughs> programs at the zoo, but we had to be really careful with them because for one, they had the sticky toes, but for two, they were really good at jumping. And their toes were so good at sticking that if you weren't careful and you like just picked up a gecko, you could actually rip their little toe pads off. So you had to be very gentle, and when you picked them up, you had to wait for them to release their toes, because if you just kind of pulled them and they weren't releasing their toes on their own, you could rip their toe pads off. So you have to wait for them when they're ready. Um, many of the geckos have scales that cover their eyes, and in order to clean their eyes, they do lick their eyeballs. It's really kind of neat. When they shed, they will shed that scale. Now, um, snakes also have a, a scale covering their eyes. It's called a broil. They don't lick their eyeballs, though. The geckos are the only ones that lick their eyes. It's kind of cool. Now, the geckos have a sticky tongue that they use to catch their food. Um, and the regrowing of their tail is a good defense mechanism. It's kind of like here you can have my tail so you can eat the tail instead of eating me. It's a way for them to survive, but it's kind of a last resort because taking the tail off and regrowing a new one costs a lot of energy. And the animal doesn't want to use up all that energy if it doesn't have to. So it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a really kind of expensive as far as energy is concerned for the animal. So the animal doesn't want to do that unless it really has to. So losing the tail is really a last resort and is a sign of stress. Now if you get a gecko as a pet, um, losing a tail can happen to a pet gecko, but again it's a sign of stress. We had geckos again at the zoo. Um, none of the ones we had at the zoo lost their tails because we were trained how to handle the animal appropriately, so they were never stressed. Um, unrelated to the geckos, there are also gila monsters, or gila monsters, I think is how they're pronounced. And they're the only venomous lizard. When they lose their tail, though, doesn't the tail like wiggle too? Yes, the tail will wiggle. It's like muscle contractions, and it's to make it look like a worm or something. So it, yeah, kind of makes Yes, exactly. So that the animal is distracted, so that the um, the gecko can get away. Very good. Yep. Um, so the heel monster is the only venomous lizard, and the venom is released through grooves in its teeth, and that way um, it can it venomates its um, anything that it bites as a way to try and, one, hurt its prey, and two, hurt anything that might be trying to hurt it. Now, obviously, snakes have venom, but as far as lizards, the Gila monster is the only lizard with venom. The Komodo dragon is different. What's weird about the Komodo dragon body? Yes. So the Komodo dragon, has tons of bacteria in its bite that can cause severe infection. So even though the Komodo dragon doesn't have venom, the problem with that is its bite is very nasty and can cause a really, really bad infection because its bite and its mouth and its saliva is just plain gross and has lots of bad bacteria. of the feet of the gecko. I really like how this close-up one here shows his little toe pads. And this is what it looks like really close up with the little hairs. And you can see the little hairs. And here's his tongue that's kind of flipping out to grab the bug. So you can kind of see how that's similar to what a frog tongue would look like. But the toe pads, again, that's what's really cool. And the little tiny hairs on the toe that allow him to grip things very, very well. Now, the legless lizard we were talking about as well. The legless lizard, does, it looks like a snake, but it is not a snake. It's a sign of a lizard that has, for whatever reason, as 
far as evolution is concerned, it had legs at one point and it lost those legs and it went back to kind of a primitive state and um, it has eyelids that close, which makes it a lizard, and it has ear holes, which also make it a lizard. So these are traits that are not snake-like traits. So when you look at it, it, ha it, it looks like a lizard because it has eyelids and it has ear holes. That's why it is not a lizard. Or, sorry, not a snake. Snakes don't have those. So these are the different types of lizards that you would be responsible for knowing for the test. This one in particular, I have seen a lot around this area, the five-lined skink. Um, I found these around my yard a lot where I live in Boonville, so I know that they, they get up to this area as well. Um, but the five-lined skink, the Great Plains skink, I know we have in this area also. Leopard gecko is a very common pet. Um, I know Elizabeth has a leopard. We have two, right? Yeah. So Elizabeth has two leopard, leopard geckos. Leaf-tailed gecko is another one that's a common pet. I know crested gecko is a common pet as well. I can't find a pet for it. Um, green anole, chameleon, and then here's the Gila monster, that, and then the green iguana. Green iguanas, they just get huge. They're really surprisingly big. Um, they're kind of like scaly dogs is what a lot of people compare them to. They do have really gentle temperaments for the most part. I think the reason a lot of people don't have the green iguanas as pets is just because of their size. They just get really, really large. Like as long as one of these tables large. They just require very big space. Aren't iguanas like kind of invasive? Yes, because people will get them as pets and then not realize how big they get and then release them. He's not a lizard. He's not a lizard on the thing. I know. Well, I didn't think, I didn't think um, Elizabeth would be up there because oh, he's, he's, he's here, here, you know? Liz, we used to see Liz all the time. He's you should there. hopefully know that Liz is here driving. Oh, for the sake. Yeah. I thought he was. I thought he would. Well, maybe not a dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Any questions about lizards before I move on to squamata, with which it, um, well, the suborder serpentine. How is Liz so cute? How is Liz so cute? It just is. Funny story about Liz. Took Liz home for spring break. And my my grandmother, my children's great grandmother, 85 years old, came over for one of my kids' birthdays. She didn't like my snake because I have a ball python. She wouldn't touch the snake. My sister's obsessed with my snake and keeps trying to steal it. She's my mother. Um, but I brought the bearded dragon out, and my my grandmother loved the bearded dragon. So I have a picture of this 85-year-old woman with the bearded dragon just cuddling it and petting it with this big old smile on her face. It was really cute. Liz made friends. Anyway, okay. Okay, so um, suborder serpentines, which is the snakes, most are harmless constrictors. Um, but there are some 300 species that are venomous. We do have venomous species in Missouri. The two that are, you are most likely to come across around here, copperheads, rattlesnakes, maybe water moccasins, cottonmouths, but um, only if you're around like a river or something. Not very common. I have been out in the woods a lot. I have only come across a copperhead in the wild one time. Um, There's a lot more in Kentucky. Yeah. I've only come across a copperhead in the wild one time in all of my wood wanderings. And I've been outside a lot. I have come across many, many other snakes. Like I said, just found one right now. And I did not hesitate to pick it up because well, first of all, I knew what it was, but secondly, very uncommon to come across one. I mean, it's not impossible, but also not super common. 
Um, fewer than 100 people die of snake bites in the United States each year. There are 30,000 to 40,000 die worldwide. So, where do you think most of these snake bites occur? Australia. Australia. Everything wants to kill you in Australia. So, you're probably good. And snakes are wonderful animals. They are so helpful to the environment. I understand that some people have fears of snakes. Everybody's got a fear of something, okay? Um, you know, some people don't like beetles. Some people don't like bugs. Some people don't like snakes. I get it. I don't like vomit. That's my thing. I have no room to talk because I don't like vomit. Also, I don't feel weird saying this because, yeah, I don't like black socks. Black socks? I don't like black socks. I know, they're weird. I don't like them. I love black socks. I don't like black socks. I don't like new black socks, but I really have the fuzzy that gets stuck I don't like black socks. Why? Why? Those are pretty. Okay, Why? I don't like white socks. Why? 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 I don't like black socks. I know. I don't like certain textures. I don't like 3D textures. I don't like black socks. So see, everybody has a thing. So I get it. I get it if you don't like snakes. But I'm telling you, they are good. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean you have to kill it. Yeah. See, I don't have to. I don't like black socks, but I can be in the same room as them. I hate vomit, but I have four children that puke all over me. Just because you don't like snakes doesn't mean you have to hurt it. Okay? Okay. All snakes have elongated organs because they have to. They have to have elongated organs because it fits into their body that way. That's all. That's the only way it'll fit. One of their lungs is actually kind of smushed because, and not very usable because there's not really room for that other lung in their body. Some of them actually have hip bones that are kind of left over. The ball python is one of them. Um, so then if you check your snake back by its cloaca, it'll have leftover hip bones. Chew. 
So chin opens up, jaw pops out, and the other thing is their teeth are curved backwards. Mm -hmm. This way, when the food try, like if the food tries to pull, it pulls against those teeth that are curved backwards, and that way the um, the animal can't escape. So it is caught in the mouth of the um, snake, so it can't retract itself. Um, I did get bit by a snake one time at the zoo, and it was a constrictor, so its teeth were curved backwards. It was a small snake, so it didn't really hurt, but its teeth got caught in my hand um, because its teeth were curved backwards. I didn't want to hurt the snake, but I couldn't get the snake off because its teeth were stuck, so I had to get somebody else to help me, and we had to kind of like gently get its teeth out. Um, it tried to let go of me, but because its teeth were curved, it was having trouble. Yeah, I mean, it tried to let go, but it, it was stuck. So we had to gently get its teeth out. Um, then they, snakes also have something called a Jacobson organ. A Jacobson organ is a structure on the roof of the mouth. And basically what they do is they have their tongue, which has the two prongs, it's called a forked tongue. And they put their tongue out, and really the tongue is like, it's kind of tasting the air. Now you might have learned it's called smelling the air. Basically what it is is it's picking up chemicals and particles from the air. So they put the tongue out and they get the particles that are in the air. And they put the tongue back in their mouth and they put it into the roof of their mouth in this Jacobson organ. And those chemicals are detected and interpreted in this Jacobson organ. So it's kind of like a sensory thing. Now many of them will also have pits and the pits are along their upper lip. Now, just because they have pits does not mean they're venomous. Um, snakes that are not venomous can also have pits. The pits just help to, um, detect changes in heat. So it helps them determine if something hot is nearby. This is why you should never put a heating pad in with a snake because they will detect that heat. And many snakes have thought, oh, it's a hot mouse and they will eat their heating pad and choke on it and die. So the heating pad should never go in with a snake because they detect the heat and they think it's something they can eat. So this is what it looks like with the heat sensing pits. Here's the pit and here is Jacobson organ at the top. So they stick their tongue out to get the chemicals and then they stick it up here at the roof of their mouth in that Jacobson organ. So again, the pits can be found, I mean I'm sure you've heard of a pit viper. Well, venom is snake and it's venom, not poison, because venom is injected, the poison you swallow, so it's venom. Um, so pit vipers do have the pit, but they're not the only ones. Non-toxic snakes can also have pits. But the pits help them to detect heat. Here are the examples of the fangs. This is a nice one with those fangs. He's obviously getting ready to strike. And this shows how the jaw works. So the back of the jaw here is popped out of its socket, and then the front of the jaw is not attached so that it can spread apart, and the teeth are curved backwards so that the animal cannot escape either. Now there are some snakes that eat eggs. This one you don't have to write down, but the egg-eating snake, it can swallow the egg whole, and it actually has a rough, like, part on the top of its mouth, and that will crush the egg so that it can eat the yolk part on the inside. So it swallows the egg, and then it crushes that part down so that it can eat the yolk inside. Um, most other types of snakes will just eat the, um, will just eat the animal. But the egg-eating snake does have that sharp spike inside its throat to crush it. So that's kind of cool. And then it actually spits out the shell because it doesn't want the shell. So it compacts it and spits out the shell. <laughs> These are the venomous snakes in Missouri, the ones you do need to watch out for. Masasagua, the eastern Masasagua, timber rattlesnake, Osage Copperhead, probably the one you're going to run into the most. Cottonmouth, obviously gets its name because of the white mouth. Mostly found around water areas for this one. And then the Pygmy Rattlesnake. 
So if you're going to run into any of them, it's probably the timber rattlesnake or the Osage copperhead, most likely the copperhead. Cotton mouth, more common, but mostly around water without them. You seen a cotton mouth? Me too. Yeah. Have you ever seen a rattlesnake in the wild? Not seen a rattlesnake in the wild. I saw cotton mouth about 50 times. I have seen rattle, baby rattleheads, or rattleheads, huh? <laughs> baby rattlesnakes at a nature center. Um, which we actually released into the wild. And they're really cute because they had these little nubs on their tails before they had a rattle. So. And then these are some other common ones, um, or maybe not so common, that you are also responsible for knowing. Um, Hognose snake. Hognose snakes are so interesting. First of all, they get the name hognose because their nose is turned upwards. That's because they dig with the nose. And part of that is because they like toes. And they are actually slightly venomous and their fangs are in the back. Um, we had hognose snake at the zoo and we actually handled them at the zoo. They have a musky scent. Um, but the hognose snakes play dead. Um, with the hognose snake, when they get scared, they will roll over, poop all over themselves so they stink, and they will stick their tongue out and play dead. And what's really funny about the hognose snake is if you flip it back, it'll just roll back over because they think that being upside down means that they're dead. So when you come across the hognose snake, you try and flip it back over right side up, he'll just flip himself back over. So he's like, nope, nope, I'm dead. I'm gonna, I'm, dead means I have to be upside down. So he flips himself back over. <laughs> um, Red-tailed boa, these are a problem animal in Florida. These are ones that people get as pets that get massive, and so people release them in Florida. Um, if we release one in Missouri, would it be as big of an issue? Yes. Not necessarily, because what do we have in Missouri that would wipe them out? Predators. Not necessarily predators, but cold winters. Oh, these are rainforest animals. So the red-tailed boa would not survive our winter times, but Florida doesn't have cold winters. That's why they did so good. So red-tailed boa and boa constrictors, they both did really good in Florida because Florida doesn't have cold winters to wipe them out. Now, never release an animal that's from a pet store into the wild, bad idea. Um, the bearded dragon that we had at the zoo when I left was actually one that somebody brought in because somebody released it into Kansas. Desert animal, Kansas winter, not good combination. Um, so don't, I mean, do your research before you get pet. Anyway, giant anaconda, um, saw scaled viper, eastern garter snake, these guys are all over here too. King cobra, most people recognize that. Green tree python, they're cute. There's a little green bump. <laughs> We had one of these at the zoo, and this is all he did. He just sat there on a vine. Aww. Whenever he went to see him, he just sat there. That's kind of what he did. And then inland tapen, does anybody know what's special about this guy? The most venomous snake. Excellent, Jordan. Most venomous snake in the world. Inland tapen, most venomous snake in the world. And where is it found? Australia. Of course, it's in Australia. Inland tapen, most venomous snake in the world. Alright, any questions about any of that? Could we go back to like the one right before? Uh, this, not this one? This one? Yeah. That one? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. Alright, we will have a new assignment. Um, I just need to post it.